I have a Carl Zeiss Jenna Tessar 50 millimeter 2.8 lens here that I'm going to be fully disassembling and cleaning the aperture of. This lens is the M42 mount version and it's a little bit harder to take apart than I was initially expecting um, for a few reasons and one of them is that when you actually take apart and want to get access to the the diaphragm and want to just clean off the blades, the diaphragm blades tend to fall out um, so it's actually very difficult to clean them on their own without just cleaning the entire aperture and then reassembling it. And then the reassembly process of the aperture is um, a little bit more difficult than on some other lenses. The mechanical sections inside are also a little bit more complicated than on some other lenses that I've seen, um, but it is something that you can repair the uh, mechanical sections and get access to those fairly easily. But actually cleaning the diaphragm, um, and if you see here on this copy, there is some grime on the diaphragm. Cleaning the diaphragm is much harder than on other lenses because of the tendency the blades have to fall out. So we're going to be fully disassembling this lens as I mentioned and then also cleaning the diaphragm blades and then reassembling it. We'll start by going in from the back of the lens to get access to the mechanical sections because like I mentioned um, it's difficult to clean the aperture on its own so the mechanical sections are usually um, the easiest part to repair on this particular lens. So on this back section here on the mounting plate we have three slotted screws. Uh, this lens uses I believe slotted screws almost exclusively which is another small annoyance so I'll undo these three. Now the entire mounting plate just slide off this little silver section goes through there so I'm going to lift straight up. Have the mounting plate and that also loosens up this next ring down here which we'll remove in a moment but this does reveal all the mechanical parts on the inside. And as I mentioned, it's a, a fairly complicated design actually for a, a, a lens like this where you've got like springs and then levers and um, these other mechanisms that are hitting the levers over here. Um, so there's actually a lot that can go wrong and on this particular copy I've noticed that sometimes the aperture would tend to get stuck um, and that was actually caused by this little little uh, knob right here that is make sure that the aperture only depresses when it's mounted on a camera it goes through a little slot over here and that was actually causing friction. I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, how everything's getting coupled together in the reassembly phase but it is just more complicated than a lot of other lenses. So next up on the back section can remove the next ring which is the um, aperture ring here. It's just loosely in place and I have to slide it out under this little black notch over there so that comes off easily. And this also has the aperture control curve on it that we'll use later. And we're not going to mess around with any of the mechanical sections on here because you don't really need to take them apart. If there's any mechanical problems with them, you could probably identify them at this stage by just seeing how everything operates. We're actually going to go in and get access to the back of the diaphragm blades um, because the, when you clean just the back of the diaphragm blades, they do not fall out as easily as when you reveal both sides. So right here on this intersection, there's the back glass element with two little divots on this black ring going around holding it in place for a spanning wrench. So we'll use a spanning wrench to undo that black ring. And this is just holding the entire back glass piece in place. So I'll set that aside and now this back glass piece will just pop right out. The way you can tell which side goes out is on the back glass piece itself there's a little line and that's the side that goes out. It kind of is more con uh, concave on this side as well but this little line needs to be like that so it's going out. And now we do have access to the back of the diaphragm blades. To clean them and you can do them, you can clean them okay in this position but you do have to um, press down this little silver lever on this side to actually make sure that they're fully closed and they stay closed even when you move around the aperture control ring. So you can clean them on the back side and the advantage of cleaning them in this state is that they will not fall out of place. You can actually um, clean them lightly on this side. But if there is a lot of oil on them, um, you really need to be able to clean both sides of the aperture blades. And unfortunately on this lens you can't do that easily because when you get access to the front of the aperture blades, the, uh, the blades themselves tend to just fall out. So we'll actually go do that now. So on the front of the lens, there's the name ring right here and there's no divots or anything for a spanning wrench which is really annoying um, but what you can do on this is right here I have a little 
a section of pipe and then uh, two rolls of gaffer's tape that I've made. And using this section of pipe, you can use the gaffer's tape, uh, which doesn't leave as much residue as something like duct tape, and actually get some friction going there to undo just the name ring. And once you have it undone, you can undo the rest by hand, but un to actually undo it initially required quite a bit of force. So there's the name ring. Next we have this black ring, the one going around here. And it is just held in place by three screws. These were also in uh, very well. I think there was some adhesive that was also in there, but you can undo them by hand. Um, but I did slightly damage some of the screws when I initially undid it. So you might have to apply quite a bit of force. So lift off this large black ring here. Now we can see the, some of the coils for the actual focusing. And um, you can actually see now the front glass piece, which is really far recessed down into the lens. If you actually look at it from the side, the front glass piece is way down there. So to actually remove the front glass piece, there are two little divots in this kind of um, grayish colored ring going right here and here um, that you can use a pointed tip spanning wrench or a screwdriver on to actually undo. So I'll go in with the pointed tip spanning wrench here, just loosen that up and then undo this entire piece. Okay, so here's the front glass piece with all the edging and various components on that. So that can be cleaned on both sides. And now this is the stage where if you're not careful, the diaphragm blades can easily fall out of place. And once that happens, they're a pain to put back together. You can see that the diaphragm itself is all exposed right here. Um, and the blades themselves are fairly small. So you can actually clean both sides of the diaphragm in this current state. But what you need to do to make sure that the blades don't fall out is that when you're cleaning it, there's this kind of silver ring here. And if you look at it from the side, that's what's actually holding in the diaphragm. Um, blades that so it's this ring that has the little um, I believe six or five little holes in it that the blades themselves are locking into so you need to hold this down because it can move up and down slightly and just enough on my copy that the blades could fall out if you were cleaning the backside and you applied pressure to the front of the blades so if you do attempt to clean the blades in this current state, be sure to hold on top of this little silver ring in here firmly as you're cleaning both the front side and the back side of the aperture control blade, or the aperture blades, um, so that they do not fall out of place. You can see that this is pretty safe. I can rotate around and even apply some pressure on here. They're thin blades, so you don't want to apply too much pressure, but you can clean them off fairly well. But for this disassembly, we're actually going to remove the blades themselves and clean them on their own because you can see that they have quite a bit of uh, grime buildup on them. So to do that, I'm going to go back on the back side of the lens and actually remove the inner part of the lens, um, inner part of the focusing mechanism, which, as I can, can still focus here, is this section right in here from the outer part of the lens, which actually has the focusing ring and then all the mechanical parts over here. So what's holding that in place is that when I go to focus as far out as possible, there's this little track over here on this side of the lens, um, which a little screw type thing is moving up and down. And this track is preventing us from actually removing the intersection. It's preventing the intersection from going any further along so that we can unscrew it fully from the coils for the focusing mechanism. So by undoing these two screws right here and removing the track, we can then uh, focus out further past where we normally would be able to and remove the entire intersection. So remove these two screws and this little track. And now grabbing the front of the lens, the intersection can focus out past where I could go before and actually remove the two sections. So now we have the outer section with the focusing mechanism um, and the, all the mechanical parts that were actually coupling the aperture control ring into the aperture and diaphragm with this inner section which actually contains the diaphragm itself. And you can see that we can now directly, oh, I've gone and messed up the blades, but you can directly control the diaphragm um, by moving back and forth this little lever over here. 
So that is what I was trying to show before is that how easy it is to mess up the blades if you're not careful. But since we're going to be taking this apart anyways, it doesn't really matter too much. So to actually remove the blades, we need to remove this silver ring in here um, that has is holding in the different blades. It had the five holes that the blades were going into that one of them is now slipped out of. And that is held in place by, on this side right here, this little lever that's controlling the aperture. Um, it has two screws, one here and one on this side. Um, this one over here is easy to undo, but this other one is, can be kind of a pain because it's positioned slightly behind the this section over here, so you kind of have to shift this back and forth um, to actually undo both of them. So I'll undo these two. Okay, and now this entire little silver piece right here should be able to slide right out. Let's see. There we go. So this silver piece is what's being hit from the outside of the lens to actually control the aperture. And it's what's holding that inner section of the aperture blades, the top plate, in place as well. So now we can just remove that top plate right here. Lift that right out and all the blades are going to fall out. Which is what we expect. So we've got the five little blades right here as well. So I'm just going to set aside the five blades for a moment and we'll come back to cleaning them. All right, now looking back at this diaphragm mechanism, there's not mu too much left here, um, but there is this bottom plate as well. Um, and during the reassembly, this bottom plate in here, which is where the other side of the aperture blades were going, during the reassembly, um, you can see that there are three little screws right here. Um, you could try to actually take this out and um, put the diaphragm back together outside of the lens and slip it back into place. But I found that because the um, little screws down here are actually under the blades, it's almost impossible to actually uh, tighten down the screws again without just um, dislodging the blades from where they are. So it's very difficult to actually um, to reassemble the diaphragm outside of the lens in my experience. Um, but you can reassemble the diaphragm within the lens. So there's not much point to actually taking off this bottom plate. Um, and then the other parts over here, there's just a little spring, um, which is holding the aperture open by default over here. So that's not too exciting, so we'll set that piece aside. And on this other piece, the main body section, outer section of the focusing piece, um, I did not find a way to actually remove the focusing ring here, which is the one body section um, it's externally visible that I did not find a way to remove. Um, but you do have a little bit better access to some of the internal mechanical pieces over here. And I will talk more about the way that these are all coupling together during the reassembly because that's when it's easier to see how everything works. But now let's return back to the little diaphragm aperture blades here. I'm just going to clean them off. So I put them in a flat bottomed dish here and I'm just going to use a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips to clean them off. You can see that here, let me get some of the alcohol. You can see that each blade has two little pegs on it. So right here. So I'm grabbing one. There's another one on this other side. So you want to be careful of these and not press down too hard on the blades um, because they could warp. Uh, with these little pegs sticking up. So you really want to be gentle with these blades. They're very easy to bend if you're not careful. So what I'm going to be doing is with Q-tip, just taking each blade, using two Q-tips, just very gently brushing off each blade. You don't need to use a lot of force. You just want to get the oil off each one. Being careful not to put too much pressure, especially on this side over here where the two little posts are and flip this over. Do the same on the other side and just repeat with the other blades as well. And you do not want to use your fingers to actually handle the blades because that will leave oil on them. So you want to use a little tweezers or some other mechanism to transfer them and then dry them off fully.
All right, so that has the disassembly of the lens all complete. We have the optics, back optic here, and then the front optic in its housing, all separate from the mechanical sections, which includes the main outer section here of the focusing mechanism, which has all the mechanical couplings of the diaphragm um, to the uh, aperture control ring, separate from the diaphragm itself. Also separate from all the little blades that we've cleaned and all the other body sections like the aperture control ring. So now we're going to start on the reassembly and this is where things get a little bit hard in some sections. Um, just fitting everything back together correctly can be a little bit challenging, um, but it is possible to reassemble this uh, without, too, without too many problems. We'll start with the diaphragm here and actually reassembling this. So looking at the diaphragm, we actually, the easiest way to do this is to reassemble it inside of the lens. And the way that these blades were lining up is that if we're looking down at the blades here, they're going to go into the aperture control mechanism. The side of the blade that has the little post on the edge here goes up. And so that's what's actually going into the outer section here. The other little post on the edge right here is going down into these grooves down here. And then each blade overlaps on top of each other. So it goes like this, just around the lens. Um, around the entire circle of the diaphragm. Uh, so the only real challenge is then this last blade, which would have to go on, on top of this other one here and then under this first one. But what happens once you set them up like this is that within the lens, because of how the two posts are being locked together and how these two rings, the top section and the bottom section move independently, it opens and closes the aperture. So we need to repeat that inside of the lens. So we'll start with just a blade here. Again, the little post on the edge here is the one that's going down into these slots. Doesn't matter which one you pick. Now for the next one, I'm going to line it up so it goes on top of the previous one. Same for the next two. And now on this third, or on this last one, the fifth blade, uh, it has to go on top of this other one, so I'll just get it in place first, like this. I'm sure it's going down into the slot there. Okay, and now it needs to go also under this first one. So right here, it needs to go under this one on that side. So to do that, um, I'm going to hold down this side of the blade over here then kind of lift it on top of this other one. Okay, and now I'm just gonna line these all up so they go around the edge and make sure that they're all still remaining in the correct slots. So now to get these, this top ring on, you'll see that the top ring has a little gap on this side over here. And that's actually where on the outside here, I'm not gonna tilt it because all the blades will come out, but or two, here I can kind of angle it a little bit, but there's this gap in the aperture control ring in the diaphragm right here. And the little gap right here needs to line up with that. Um, there's actually a, a silver lever that you can just see the edge of right here, um, and that's what's going to go into that little indentation. But to make this easier, we need to get the silver lever out of the way. So we're just going to, it has a little spring on it. You might want to undo the spring, um, or you can just kind of pry it out of the way. Here, I'll actually undo the spring on this. So it took off the spring there. Just get that silver lever out of the way because it prevents you from getting this plate fully down flat. I'll find the orientation so that the two sections are lining up and that these little holes on the top here are lining up with the ones down there and kind of just set this down roughly in place. Being pretty gentle here. And now I'll work this back and forth inside the lens until all the little posts go in place. And you may have to work the individual 
little blades back and forth, but now I've got it. So you can see as I move this ring now, this opens and closes, which is what we want. So to actually lock that in place fully, we can put in this front glass piece, and that is what is holding that in place so that it doesn't move up and down. So I'll just lower this in place as well. Now I can go in with the pointed tip spanning wrench, or really just any screwdriver will work for this, and in these two little divots, actually tighten this down. Now, if we did everything correctly, the blades will not fall out of place, which is nice, because it makes the rest of the reassembly a little bit easier. So now to reinstall the little spring here that I removed, and actually get the rest of the diaphragm hooked up. So here's the little spring, and here's this silver bar piece. You see this silver bar piece has two sides. It has this kind of a, a long side right here, and then one with a little tiny slotted screw over here. Um, and what the silver bar does, it goes under right here, so that the long side of it goes up into the, um, under the focusing ring, or the focusing mechanism section here. And it has the two slotted screws under here, one here and one here, that go in place. So that's the first thing we'll get in place there. So as you notice, these uh, slots that the screw is going into are much lar larger than they need to be. And this is actually one of the areas where you can adjust the lens. So you can, um, by changing the position where the screws fall within those uh, slots there, you can actually adjust how the aperture opens and closes, which is really helpful. I'm kind of just installing it at the middle section right now, but we'll see if this is the correct position in a moment. As you can see, oh, it's closing up a little bit too far in this position actually where I have it installed. So I'm going to actually undo these, just loosen them up slightly. And because this bar over on this side controls how far you can open and close the aperture by moving the bar slightly over, you can adjust how the aperture closes and how far it opens. So that's still a little too small. So that looks pretty good now. So now to reinstall this little spring here, I'm gonna take this lever on this back side and flip it around so that it goes into the lens like this. And now taking this little spring, it has two sides. One is more of a, a flat side. It's a little hard to see because it's so small. And the other one's more angled. I'm gonna take this angle side and hook it into the hole on this little piece right here. And now I'll take the other side and it hooks onto this little post right here. Just on top of that. So now when I hit that lever on this side, it should open the aperture and then fully close it again automatically. Now we may as well install the back glass piece as well at this stage. So it just is going to slide down again the uh, little groove on the back glass piece is the side that's going out. So it slides down like this. Make sure it's sitting flat down inside the lens and then we'll use the black ring that sits on top of it to lock that in place. and a spanning wrench on the two little divots there to actually lock this down fully. So that has the entire diaphragm piece now reassembled. So at this stage, now let's take a look at how everything is actually going to be fitting together. So we can see on the diaphragm piece, we have this lever here, the silver lever, opens and closes the diaphragm and it's held open by default. So that's the important piece on this, is this little silver lever over here. And then on this back section here, we have quite a, a whole mess of things. Um, but 
if you remember, the behavior of this was that the, the diaphragm itself only uh, opens and closes when the lens is mounted. And the way it detects that was this little post on the back. So this is uh, the little post on the back section of the lens. And then the two ways to control the diaphragm, one was the aperture control ring, which was going in this section down here, around this top section. And we can actually slide that in place right now. So I'll just temporarily put this in place. So you have the aperture control ring right there. And then the other way is this little lever over here, which fully stops down the lens. So that right there. So let me remove the aperture control ring for a moment. So the way that everything is being coupled into the intersection of the diaphragm is through this lever over here. There's this piece right here that moves back and forth. Um, and when this, uh, when this lever uh, or little post on the outside of the lens is fully up, it actually can't move fully. But when you depress it, then this lever can actually move back and forth differently. So it has a little hook over on this side that prevents it from moving when the lever is fully up. But when you mount the camera, or mount the lens onto a camera and this little post gets depressed, then this lever can move back and forth. So that lever is what is going to go onto this side of the diaphragm, the side where my finger is right now, and it's going to hit up against that and open the diaphragm. And the two ways that that lever can be controlled, one is with the aperture control curve um, on the aperture control ring. So let me just grab that aperture control ring again. So you can see that there is a little guide that goes along this curve over here. So that's one way that it, this lever can be controlled. The other way is this little black uh, lever here, which just directly hits the stop down depression lever on the back of the lens. So that's the other way that it can be controlled. So our job here is to make sure that all these pieces are lining up correctly when we put the diaphragm back into the main lens body. Because what we want to end up with is having this little silver lever right here going into this side of the diaphragm on right here so it can hit it back and forth. So during the reassembly to make this whole part easier, we're actually not going to worry about getting everything together. So I'm going to press down on this little post back here and flip the lever so it's all the way up. Um, and we just need to know that the lever will go down in this section right here. And now looking at the front of the lens here, I'm going to grab the diaphragm and on the diaphragm, there's this little screw right here. And that screw is actually what's going into the track that we were looking at before that limits how far you can focus. So there's this little track piece. And this track piece is going right here. So we're going to line up the screw with the track right now. And just guide these two back together. Here I'm focused at uh, infinity as well. Uh, on the focusing mechanism. And I have the little screw right here lined up with where it needs to go into in this track right here. So I'm going to put the track in place and just reattach the track with the two slotted screws here. And we'll check in a moment if this is all lined up correctly. Okay, so the two things you want to check now at this stage. One is that you can focus over the entire range um, without it falling out or getting stuck anywhere along the focusing. So we have the focusing indicator right here. Right now it's at infinity. I can't go past infinity, which is expected. And when I rotate it around, it's a little bit hard to rotate in this position. It, hit, it hits over at the minimum focusing distance of 0.35 meters as well. So in between the smooth movement and it can't go past either of the two extremes and the actual diaphragm in here isn't falling out of the lens. So that's one thing you want to check. The other thing that you want to check is that the lever now is on the correct side of the, the lever on the outside here is on the correct side of the one on the inside here. So it needs to be on the side over here so that it presses up against it um, and opens it up like that. Uh, and you can check that by depressing this little post back here. And then you should see that when you move this lever back and forth, a little hard to do, but opens and closes the aperture. 
So now everything should be good in that current orientation. We'll continue on by installing the aperture control ring itself here. So the aperture control ring, as I showed before, has the aperture control curve and then this little gap on this side here. So this gap goes under the little black lever down here and then the curve goes under this little post that's sticking out from the lever that's coupling the outside of the lens to the inside of the lens over there. So just slide this in place and then make sure that this little piece is on top of the aperture control curve. And it only actually engages, I believe, when the post is pushed down. So you can see that it lowers that down onto the aperture control curve. And now to lock down all the back sections here, we'll take this back mounting plate piece and it has a little gap for the lever right here, the stop down lever. So that goes in there and then the three screws should line up as well. So install the three black screws on the back here. Okay, make sure everything's still working fine. Turning to the front of the lens, let me just grab a lens cap to sit this on. We have to install the ring here, one that um, is the filter ring holder. So it just is going to go in place and on my copy of the lens, I'm not sure if this is on all of them, but it needs to go in a specific orientation with the three screws here. Only one orientation seems to actually have them line up properly. Which I'm not sure why that is, but it seems a little bit odd. Uh, so there we go. So that's the orientation I'm looking for. And then install the three slotted screws going around here. So tighten those down. And then finally, complete the reassembly, just reinstalling this name ring here, just screws in place. And because there are no spots for a spanning wrench, you can either just tighten it down as best you can by hand, or use that pipe again with the gaffer's tape to tighten it down a little further. You may have to clean off the name ring a slight bit after using that though. So that has the reassembly complete. You can make sure that everything is working again as expected. You can focus between the two extremes here, infinity, and the minimum focusing distance properly. Make sure that we can, when we hit this back lever here, it stops down the lens. And adjusting the aperture here also works. All stop down. And then finally hitting this lever back here also stops down the lens on this side. Overall, this lens is um, its more difficult to take apart than you would initially imagine. Looking at it, it has a somewhat complex mechanical structure inside for the uh, lens um, and how things are getting coupled together that's difficult to reassemble correctly. There's a lot that can get misaligned or have friction and other things that go wrong when you're putting it back together. And there are some pitfalls, like when you're taking apart the lens, you have to be careful uh, not to uh, take out the aperture blades if you don't want to or else that adds another huge reassembly step um, that most of the time you don't want to do. Um, so just doing simple repairs on this lens is not easy because um, oftentimes it requires disassembling the lens more fully than you re really would want to to just do a simple repair like cleaning the, uh, the diaphragm off if there's oil on it. You risk also dislodging the aperture blades. So this lens is repairable but I would just make sure that you're aware of what you're getting into when you do take it apart.